Mornings at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Starting off with a live look out at the Alamo City. Yesterday was gorgeous out there. If you made it out and about, we know there were so many events going on, including Muertos Fest happening again today. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey, see if we can get a repeat of yesterday's beautiful Saturday. But for now, happy Sunday. Good morning. Good morning. It is October 30th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So yesterday you made it out and about. Yes, went downtown to Muertos Fest. I walked along the Riverwalk. I felt like a tourist. It was amazing. I was like, oh, our city is so beautiful, even more beautiful when you can enjoy it, Sarah, because the weather <laughs> was just perfect. Honestly, it was a gorgeous day yesterday. We were only able to get up to 74 degrees beautiful outside today a little bit warmer in the afternoon but we're actually starting off chilly it's 50 in san antonio it's 43 in bernie good morning in bulverde it's 44 degrees 52 in canyon lake 43 in bandera 48 port sa 51 in gonzalez 46 in yavaldi as we mentioned huertos fest going on again today from noon to 9 p.m at hemisphere all across san antonio it's going to be a beautiful day near 70 at noon, 78 for the high temperature today, and in the evening temperatures will be falling into the 60s. We'll have mostly sunny skies with some cirrus clouds working their way in in the afternoon. Now there are some things that we need to talk about in the forecast for tomorrow, especially if you're planning on taking kids trick or treating. In the evening, there is the potential for some spotty light rain. Now I'll tell you some important things to keep in mind if you're planning on going trick or treating. And while this rain may be more of a nuisance than anything we really need to worry about that forecast coming up for you in just a bit. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, San Antonio police are searching for a suspect in the shooting of an off duty officer who was driving home with his son. Right now, police believe the shooting was sparked by road rage. So take a look. This was the scene around 915 last night. This is on Northwest Loop 1604 at Gilbal Road. Police tell us a 47 year old off duty officer was driving home with his son. That's when another driver started to tailgate them in a white sedan. Now, police say that driver passed the off duties or off duty officers truck, then fired several rounds. That officer was shot. His son called police for help. The officer taken to the hospital at last check in stable condition. The son, a 16 year old not injured in the gunfire. Police did find multiple shell casings on the highway during the investigation. Now, that off duty officer did not return fire. As for the suspect, they drove off after the shooting. Police still investigating, trying to figure out who exactly is responsible. Police also investigating a double shooting on the city's east side that ended with two teenagers in the hospital. This is what we know right now. Police say this happened just after 930 last night. This is along Lord Road near Loop 410. Police say three teenagers were in a fight at the Stella Apartments. That fight starting in the hallway of one of the buildings then escalating to another. Three teens continued fighting throughout the complex. Two of them were shot in their legs, both taken to Bamsey, both in stable condition. Right now, police have one person in custody. We are still waiting to see what charges will be filed. A man and woman are recovering this morning after being hit by a wrong way driver. This happened last night just after 11. San Antonio police say a 69 year old man traveling westbound on Rigsby Avenue veered into the eastbound lanes and hit an oncoming driver head on. The two victims taken to the hospital but are expected to be OK. Police did evaluate the man for driving while intoxicated. Well, there is a constant need for blood donations in and around our community. We have seen so many people step up and help out, but still that need persists. Yeah, so joining us in today's leading essay segment is Roger Ruiz with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. Good morning, Roger. Always a pleasure to have you on our show. Always glad to, to see you, Sarah and Max. Uh, thank you for your donations in the past, and I think y'all are due for y'all's next donation. Oh, soon. yes. I know I definitely am. Thank you, Roger, for reminding me. <laughs> thank you, Roger. So speaking of blood donations, what is the current blood supply here locally, and you know, what does that need still look like? Yeah, definitely. So this morning when I took a look, we probably are at a three-day supply um, here locally of all blood types. Uh, we probably have a day and a half right now of O. Um, all that is great and it's moving in the right direction, but because there's times when we've seen it where it's less than a day. 
um, but still short of the, the six days that we strive for, uh, for a community our size, for an area that we cover. So uh, the need is still there. We still need people to come in, especially as we approach the holidays. We know we're going to see a decline in, in donations as, as schools are on break and uh, our frequent donors are, are on vacation, um, which supply about 30 to 35 percent of our blood in these high schools and colleges. So uh, if, if you're seeing this after the show, please make a, an appointment to come in and donate at any of our sites. There's nine locations to donate hundreds of, of mobiles that we have throughout the month that you can donate as well. So uh, if you have an hour of your time, come in and, and save some lives. Absolutely, Roger. And as you said, both Max and I have donated. We know the process is very easy super comfortable, actually pretty relaxing. So when someone does donate, where does the blood go and how is it used? Definitely. So uh, we cover a big area here in South Texas. We're 48 counties, over 100 hospitals and clinics that we serve. And 30% of, of the blood that is donated, actually a little bit over 30% goes to actually cancer patient, cancer patients um, in that area. And that's because they need multiple units to keep their uh, blood levels high enough, their platelet levels count, uh, high, count high enough um, to continue their treatment, either radiation or chemotherapy. And um, so we know uh, a lot of that big portion goes to, to cancer patients, but also uh, people with disorders, blood disorders, like sickle cell anemia, uh, people who are premature babies who, who uh, need help, um, mothers who, who, who are just delivering and having complications. The list goes on and on and who needs blood. Um, uh, so that that's kind of a, just in a nutshell who needs who needs blood and where your blood is going to uh, within those 48 counties over 100 hospitals and clinics that we serve. Now, Raj, you brought up cancer. The Big Love Cancer Care event is ongoing right now. So tell us about the event and how does that help the community? Definitely. So uh, Big Love reached out to us. Big Love Cancer Care reached out to us and said, hey, we wanted to partner with you to see how we could not only impact blood donations, but help um, cancer, pediatric cancer patients in, in our area. And we said, yeah, definitely. So what, what we've done is um, we're making donor, we're letting donors double impact, make a double impact in the community by uh, not only donating blood and saving lives, but also uh, when you donate, you also receive points or what we call donor rewards. And those donor rewards, you can def, uh, go back into the donor store uh, there on SouthTexasBlood.org and, and donate those points back to Big Love Cancer Care, where they are going to have an event this December where they're going to be giving away toys to these pediatric cancer patients. Uh, and we, we wanted to do this because we know people are maybe financially are not able to support in their community this, this holiday season. So this is a great way, not only impact saving lives, but putting a, a giant smile on pediatric patients uh, who are dealing with cancer. And we're going through some dark times uh, and, and this definitely will help them. And Roger, you know, you and I have talked about some of these pediatric cancer patients. You know, tell us and tell our viewers about some of the ones that you've met who are going through some of these dark times and how the blood donations are helping them and helping their families. Definitely. Um, and and KSET has hosted, uh, has featured some of those patients. We, we know little three-year-old Amy, who's been on your show plenty of times. But yesterday I had a, uh, the privilege of, of meeting uh, one of these these uh, pediatric case, patients, um, Jared, a uh, smart little 12 year old boy who uh, when we uh, when he found out about this program, definitely wanted to be an ambassador for it. And uh, if you go to our, our, our Facebook or any of our social media, he's on there now and uh, making the point that, hey, during these dark times for us, um, we one small toy like this means the, uh, a million dollars how he placed it put it and he's doing great he was he did a tour with me yesterday he wanted to find out how blood worked how what was the process once it donated how did it get to him so we went through all that yesterday he's, he's a great kid but yeah they they need those blood donations to continue to to fight to go through their treatment of of with cancer, of uh, getting chemotherapy and radiation, and blood helps them boost their cell count back up so they continue um, to not have to wait for treatment. And so this helps them greatly. 30% um, of our blood goes to these patients, and that's why it's so important that you continue to donate, donate blood, donate platelets. We need, it. We need both. Absolutely. I mean, no one really can say no to that smiling faces, uh, smiling and being brave as he's going through that treatment. So anyone who wants to donate can do so by visiting our website. We'll have the link to South Texas Blood and Tissue on our website later today. 
All right, yeah. Roger, thank you so much for your time this morning. Anyone who wants more information, like Sarah was saying, we're gonna have all that on ksat.com throughout the morning. Time now, 8.09, 51 degrees out. All right, coming up on GMSA, a look at some of the big game coverage highlights, including the Brandeis Broncos and the first ever UIL State Water Polo Tournament. And when we come back, taking inside a spooky car wash. Have you heard about this? I heard about this. This, okay. this looks terrifying. I'm down for car washes. <laughs> not so much the spooky. No, not no that. thanks. <laughs> Absolutely not. We'll let you know how you can enjoy question mark sure. that. <laughs> All right, 51 degrees at 810 this morning. We're going to may experience some light rain tomorrow during trick or treating. Sarah will let us know about that when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. So it's October 30th. Tomorrow is Halloween. We are continuing our Halloween series this week, a trip through a haunted car wash. Yeah, okay, so it's over on Bandera Road near Grissom, and we sent our morning and evening executive producers to check it out. Take a look. So we are at haunted car wash. That's right. This is a haunted car wash. This massive line of cars yeah. that is coming up behind us are all about to get scared in a haunted car wash. And they're out on the road. Like they're all the way out. People are waiting just for a chance to go through this. Uh, we're having a lot of fun. And uh, we wanted to do something for, for the city of San Antonio. Halloween is such a great holiday, right? And it's a kid's holiday. And just to see the kids faces light up and have fun, it, it, it's all worth it. We'll have to check it out. We'll find out how well the kids held up to it compared to us. They might have done better than we did. <laughs> Maybe, probably. We're going in. I'm so freaked out right now. Our tunnel is the star. And, and we kind of have an advantage because we have the largest tunnel in South Texas. So more tunnel, more characters in there, right? More characters, the more enhanced and elevated experience. <laughs> When our, our team come up with this idea, uh, we didn't know it was going to blow up like it did. It definitely exceeded our expectations. <laughs> People are coming in. This is all, all fun, but once they get in the tunnel, they are blown away. <laughs> oh, that's so creepy. That's so creepy. terrifying yeah what are you thinking are you gonna try it no 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 i just i'm scared haunted houses not scary thing. things not my thing you know i like the i like the festivals and the pumpkin, pumpkin carving. carving yeah right. things so, start jumping out at so me so what i was concentrated on is the actual car wash aspect of okay. this okay Sarah, you say rain could be in the forecast. Yeah, I think we're going to have some light rain tomorrow night and Tuesday morning. So hold off on the car wash until perhaps uh, Tuesday afternoon. But outside right now, I mean, look at that totally blue skies, sunny skies as we start our day. It is chilly, though, out there this morning. It's 50 degrees. We've got dew points in the upper 40s, low humidity. And take a look at temperatures in your neighborhood. 42 in Kerrville. Good morning in Del Rio. It's 47 degrees in Del Rio, 48 in Eagle Pass, 51 in Gonzales, 53 in New Braunfels, 49 in Pleasanton, 50 in San Antonio, and a closer view around the Alamo City. We've got 49 in Seguin, 44 in Bulverde, 43 in Bernie, and it's 45 for you Medina area. Now, as we look at the forecast for the day today, your Keysat 12 hour forecast, a lot like yesterday. We're going to be warming up steadily. It'll be a beautiful, gorgeous day. 62 around 10, close to noon, it'll be near 70 degrees. We'll have light winds, about five miles per hour, first from the north and then moving toward the east in the afternoon. And throughout the day today, we are going to see some cirrus clouds increase, some of those high thin cirrus clouds. So a milky hue to 
the sky in the afternoon, 78 for the high temperature. If you're trying to squeeze in a few more Halloween festivities before the weekend is over, this evening will be cool. Temperatures will be back in the 60s by 8 p.m. As we look at highs around South Central Texas, a beautiful day, close to seasonably average. 78 in Canyon Lake, 75 in Kerrville, 79 in Hondo, 77 in Del Rio, 79 in Beeville, and 80 in Catula. Now, uh, across the nation, there are some showers and storms in the uh, Mississippi River Valley, in the northern Mississippi River Valley here near St. Louis. This is from that system that brought us the rain Friday morning and the colder weather as well. And as we look to the west, there's another area of low pressure that's going to be moving through. Now, it's not going to bring a cold front, but what it is going to do is provide some lift in the atmosphere. So as it moves off to the east tomorrow in the morning, we're going to start off mostly cloudy and cool near 54. And then as that low moves into Texas, we'll see clouds increase around San Antonio so that in the afternoon, it is going to be cloudy, 77 for the high. And out toward the Rio Grande near Del Rio, we'll even see some showers as early as 3 o'clock tomorrow in the afternoon. Then, if you're planning on taking the kids trick-or-treating, here's what you need to know. We'll have scattered light rain out there in the evening hours, about a 40% coverage, so it's not going to be raining everywhere all night, but there is a chance for some showers throughout the evening. This is a snapshot of 8 o'clock. You can see again random in nature. That's where those showers are going to be. And toward midnight, again, we're going to continue to see some showers throughout the evening. Now there's an off chance for a flash of lightning, but really severe weather is not a possibility at all, and even lightning is unlikely. Even through the early morning commute on Tuesday, Tuesday, there is still a chance for some scattered rain early Tuesday morning, but by the middle of the morning and into the afternoon, we're going to see that rain come to an end around San Antonio. So planning on taking your kids trick or treating, you need to plan for spotty scattered light rain. Bring the umbrella just in case you may not need the umbrella, but if you get caught with one of those slight rain showers, you probably won't regret having one. It'll be coolish with temperatures in the low 70s, upper 60s as the sun sets and we'll be watching for an isolated flash of lightning. Again, lightning is unlikely, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. Keep in mind that whenever you hear thunder, when thunder roars, go indoors, just stuck inside really quickly. Again, this is not going to be a washout tomorrow night by any means, just a bit of a nuisance. And coming up in the next half hour, we're going to talk about how it probably won't even really help as far as the drought is concerned. We'll take a look at rainfall potential as well. It's going to be pretty low. Otherwise, we're going to be warming up in the next week in the low 80s by Thursday and Friday. A chance for storms seems probable on Saturday of next weekend. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 821, 51 degrees. Well, next, how one famous actress and the national organization came together here in San Antonio to bring voters to the polls. And taking a live look at those lotto numbers, pick three, zero, zero, four, fireball five, daily four, five, six, three, six, fireball zero. Cash five, two, four, eight, 13, 31, Texas lotto, three, eight, 26, 30, 43, 52, the Powerball, no one won the $825 million, Ooh. going to a billion max. Someone in Humble, though, won a million. Casual million, good for them. <laughs> 19, 31, 40, 46, 57, Powerball 23, Power Play 3. Good morning and welcome back. A national organization and a well-known famous actress visiting the Alamo City for a one-of-a-kind parade. So all by using tradition and a passion to rally voters to the polls. Yesterday, the actress advocate America Fedetta and the nonpartisan voter advocate group she co-founded called Harness, joined two others, When We All Vote and the other group Jolt Initiative in San Antonio's historical Avenida Guadalupe neighborhood to e educate voters about their civic duty. Part of the initiative included beautiful quinceañeras using their special day to increase participation awareness among Latino voters. The young women here today have decided to use the occasion of their quinceañeras, beautiful celebration of their transition into womanhood, to engage their families and their communities around early voting. When I turn 18, I plan on voting and just keeping up with the events, to current events. 
There are still five days left of early voting and it runs until November 4th. If you're interested in casting your ballot today, polls are open between 12 and 6. Remember, Election Day, Tuesday, November 8th. And if you have any questions about the elections, about the polls, we have all that information. Head to KSAT.com. Time now, 826, 51 degrees out. Go Astros! Oh, Astros, Phillies, game two at Minute Maid. We have some of the biggest plays we're all talking about and what comes next. And new developments on the release of Spurs player Josh Primo, what numerous reports from ESPN are saying. Good morning and we'll say happy Hallow's Eve. Yeah. Halloween Eve, yeah, sure. You know. Yeah, happy Sunday. Happy like Massey. Halloween weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you, you know? <laughs> figured out your uh, your costume yet? No, I I'm I'm, I'm no not costume. Gonna, I'm no costume because I was it was too late and I if I'm gonna do a costume I'm gonna do it very well and I only okay. had like these two all or, or nothing. Yeah, and so I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna wait till next year to put this one together. Sarah Spivey, you, you know, you throw on like a witch hat or anything like that? No, what are you saying about? <laughs> 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 no, I'm not, Max. And by the way, I hate to break it to you. Mm. Hollow's Eve is oh. tomorrow. Huh. Okay, so today is technically Hollow's Eve Eve. Ah, happy Hollow's Eve Eve. Thank you. Thank you. I won't forget that witch comment. Okay, <laughs> let's take a look at some of the temperatures out there this morning. It is very chilly out there. It's 50 in San Antonio, 44 in Bolverde, 45 Rio Medina, 42 in Kerrville, 40, uh, 54 rather in Divine, and 49 at Stinson. So chillier start than yesterday for us, but we're actually going to be warmer in the afternoon than we were yesterday. Yesterday we got up to 74 degrees. Today we're going to get up to 78. A beautiful, gorgeous day. Low humidity, not even that much wind. Wind from the west northwest at about five miles per hour. We will see some cirrus clouds increase throughout the day today, but generally again a beautiful and mostly sunny day. Cool in the evening with temperatures falling into the 60s. So what we're going to talk about in the forecast is yes, pleasant with low humidity. I'll show you neighborhood highs across south central Texas. But tomorrow there are a couple of things that I want you to keep in mind. During the day tomorrow we are going to see increasing clouds and even some rain chances in the evening. That does include trick or treating when we'll see scattered spotty light rain. But don't cancel your plans to take your kids out trick or treating because I think that it's going to be a bit more of a nuisance than anything out there tomorrow night. I'll show you that for Cassie and the future cast coming up. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, one man is dead. Another is in the hospital this morning after a traffic stop in Seguin. That's according to the Seguin Gazette. In the report, a DPS trooper arrived to help what he believed to be a stolen pickup truck, citing DPS on scene. The report said when the trooper got out of his vehicle, the driver of the truck put it in reverse, backing into the law enforcement vehicle. That's when they say the trooper opened fire on the truck, striking the driver and the passenger. The driver was reportedly pronounced dead on the scene. The passenger was brought to a San Antonio hospital. His condition is still unknown. An inmate facing a new charge this morning, a charge of escape. She tried to leave the jail annex. So this is what we know right now. Bear County Sheriff's deputies tell us an inmate tried to make a run for it yesterday morning. They say 38-year-old Genevieve Golden ran out of an emergency exit door. Now, a jailer at the jail saw her, immediately ran after her, took her back into custody. Golden now facing a charge of escape. Deputies say she was originally in jail for an arson charge from earlier this month, and that charge was a first-degree felony. Well, a popular pizza place getting its permit suspended and a sports bar cited for operating without a permit. Those are just a few things we see in today's Behind the Kitchen Door. Puesto Mexican restaurant earned a 79 on their recent inspection, but you wouldn't know it based on the old score posted on the front door. This time around, they were cited for having boxed potatoes on top of an open garbage can, and they had to toss out incorrectly dated foods in a walk-in cooler. Employees were preparing food with bracelets on, another was wearing nail polish and handling food with their bare hands, and one was seen washing their hands incorrectly. Shelves in the walk-in cooler were rusty and the walls by the water heater were moldy. Grimaldi's Pizzeria in the 300 block of Bassey got an 82 but had their food permit suspended due to not having hot water. They also needed to clean the inside of the ice machine, the vent hood, and repair a leak on their hand sink. A reinspection was ordered. They were back up and running when we stopped by this week. 
April Chinese restaurant in the 2000 block of South Alamo comes in with an 84. They were cited for having a box of raw chicken on the floor. The cold hold unit and walk-in coolers were not maintaining proper temps, and there was food debris in the cold hold, dirty soda nozzles, and dust and debris on the shelf where clean dishes are kept. Squeezing Sports Bar and Club in the 1700 block of General McMullen earned an 84. They were cited for operating without a valid permit, and they owed over $1,000 in fees. They were limited to only selling bottles and cans of beer and bags of chips until several violations were corrected. There was no hot water in the restrooms, and they needed to add some more sinks. I stopped by this week, and employee showed me they now have the proper permits and said they're working on making repairs requested by the inspector. I mean, it gave them till December to fix, like, holes in the walls and, and stuff. Do you know if there's yeah, construction they, they, that's, that's they, they, ongoing? They've been working during the week. That's what's happening behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Well, 15 people injured after a school bus crashed on its way to a high school football game in Longview. The Elkhart Independent School District says the bus was taking cheerleaders to a game in Clifton. It was raining at the time of the crash. The bus rolled over at a curve of the road just three miles west of Elkhart. Now, 12 students, two faculty members, and one infant on board. They were all taken to a nearby hospital. All of the injuries are non-life-threatening. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says her family is heartbroken and traumatized after the recent attack on her husband. In a letter to members of Congress on Saturday, she said she appreciated the outpouring of prayers and warm wishes for Paul Pelosi's recovery. In her first comment since the attack, she says the life-threatening incident has frightened her children and grandchildren. The speaker also took time to praise the quick response of San Francisco law enforcement and emergency services. Now to some new developments on the release of the Spurs player Josh Primo. Multiple reports from The Athletic and from ESPN claim that Primo exposed himself to women. Now, the reports were first published yesterday. ESPN's Ramona Shelburne, the first to report the news. Sham Sharania of The Athletic says that Primo allegedly exposed himself to a former Spurs employee and that she has already hired attorney Tony Busby to represent her. Tony Busby, you may remember the name. He represented 30 women who sued Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson for sexual misconduct. Now, this comes 24 hours after the Spurs waived Josh Primo. Remember, he was the former first-round pick in the 2021 NBA draft. There still are allegations, and Primo is still 19 years old. Now, he's currently scheduled to hit free agency, hit the free agent market on Monday, unless another team claims him. We're obviously going to have much more on this story as it develops in the weeks to come. Now to the latest in the MLB playoffs. Astros taking on the Phils in Game 2 of the World Series last night in Houston. And it is a very familiar territory for them. So up three, bottom of the fifth, one on for Alex Bregman. And wait for it. Bang! Kiss the ball goodbye. A two-run blast to left center. Astros going up 5-0. Not the first time they've been up 5-0 in the World Series, <laughs> but this time they did not blow the lead. So take a look at the final. Astros going to win it 5-2. The series now tied at one game apiece. Game three headed back to the East Coast. That is set for Monday in Philadelphia. Go Strohs. At home, the first ever UIL state water polo tournament held yesterday at Josh Davis Natatorium. Starting off with the Brandeis girls. They were the first to represent our area against Brazos Wood in the semifinals. Uh, Broncos getting on the board first after we get all the cheerleading and excitement out of the way. Breakaway for Addie Wilson, putting it past the keeper. A 1-0 lead a little later. She would find Grace Goldhammer for a shot. And there we go, right in the near post. Broncos holding a 3-2 lead early in the first, but the Buccaneers answer with eight straight to lead 10-3 at halftime. A historic season for the Broncos. And it comes to the end in the semis, 15 to 4. Our goal was really to start out strong. Like our past games, we've always started out into the fourth quarter. So we wanted to start out strong. Unfortunately, we had some penalties and ejections, which kind of hurt our offense a little bit and defense. But you know what? We started out strong and we made our goal. We came to stay. So congratulations to everyone. And obviously, we have the water, the men's water polo, as well as all the high school football. We got Football from yesterday, we know, uh, you know, the Aggies played, so there was that. I'm optimistic, Sarah Spivey. Cautious optimism. Hey, and the Cowboys play today at noon. Cowboys play today at noon, taking on the Bears, so that should be a win. Time now, <laughs> just about 840, 53 degrees out. This is really 
creepy. Are you ready to get scared some more? After the break, we're wrapping up our haunted series as a haunt our crew has never gone through before. Oh, interesting. So obviously all of this leading up to Halloween, Sarah Spivey telling us, could see some rain, but for today, it's gonna be picture perfect out there. We're gonna have a full forecast in just a bit. All right, all week we've been taking you through different creepy hot spots around town. Some of our morning team at GMSA decided to check out Haunted Oaks, and it's at Rolling Oaks Mall. All right, so this time we're actually getting a behind the scenes look and we're meeting the cast. I know that we're more gruesome than a lot of other haunted houses out there. But that's what we want. Like, we want y'all to be in that experience. Are you sure it was me? Like, if it's your birthday, you come in, we hear that it's your birthday, we literally start saying happy birthday throughout the hunt. We find out your name, it's free game. We say your name throughout the hunt, we yell it. This is really creepy. We really invite all ages, as long as the parents are okay with their kids coming in. The, the kids get glow sticks and we interact with the kids as well. We won't scare them, like, they just point their glow sticks at one of our actors and we fall to a floor for the kids. Are you breathing? No, I'm not no. breathing. I stopped breathing a long time ago. Okay. I said no. down and have fun. Do you have a friend with you here? Yeah, this is my, my little piggy. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh my God. Like I said, I hope you're having a <laughs> I'm shook right now. I feel like I say that all the time, but it was pretty crazy. <laughs> this one was pretty crazy. Oh, like, I think I screamed a lot. I, oh, I know you screamed a lot. <laughs> it's important. It was way longer too than I thought. Like, yeah, hey. that was uh, that was a really long. Thing. It was intense. We made it out. We survived. Y'all should check it out. You know what, I think I'm gonna pass for this one, but I gotta say, <laughs> as we prepare for Halloween, a lot of parents, a lot of families are asking, should I bring an umbrella? Yeah, okay, I think that good, it'll be a good idea to okay. bring an umbrella just in case tomorrow night, because even though today is going to be pleasant with low humidity, tomorrow we're gonna start to see increasing clouds and an evening rain chance. The key word for tomorrow is spotty light rain during trick-or-treating, spotty being the key word there. Not everyone is going to be seeing light rain, but you don't want to be caught without an umbrella, especially with those little Frankensteins and goblins <laughs> running around. Outside right now, beautiful and sunny. It's 50 degrees, chilly to start off our Sunday. Good morning in Kerrville, it's 44 degrees, 47 in Yavaldi, 48 in Hondo, 53 in New Braunfels, 53 in Pleasanton, 47 in Del Rio, and 49 in Catula. Gradual warm up today, a lot like yesterday, a beautiful day, just a couple of degrees warmer in the afternoon. We'll be near 70 by lunch hour. Have that Sunday brunch outside. It's going to be gorgeous out there. And we'll see increasing cirrus clouds throughout the day. Those high thin cirrus clouds. Cirrus clouds are made out of ice crystals. They put a bit of a milky hue on the horizon. That's going to be the case this afternoon. 78 degrees for the high temperature. And if you're tra trying to squeeze in a holiday party tonight, a Halloween party tonight, know that it is going to be a little on the cool side temperatures will fall back into the 60s after sunset. All in all, fairly close to the seasonal average of 77 degrees this afternoon. It'll be 75 in Bulverde. Halotus will be at 75 degrees, 79 in Hondo, 79 in Bandera, 78 in Seguin and New Braunfels, 78 Nixon Smiley, 78 in Floresville and 79 in Pleasanton. As we look at our weather setup, there's our exiting system that's bringing some rainfall uh, to parts of uh, the Midwest. That's that 
front that moved through Friday morning and brought us some rain. Our next system actually doesn't have a cold front. It's a trough of low pressure that's uh, right over parts of the desert southwest. And as it moves into Texas, we're going to see increasing clouds tomorrow morning. Mostly cloudy. It'll be cool and quiet 54 degrees. But as that low moves into Texas, we'll get a little bit of lift. We'll start to see cloudy skies in the afternoon. 77 for the high temperature tomorrow. And if you live out near Del Rio off to the west, there could be some showers in the early afternoon hours tomorrow. But around San Antonio, we'll see some scattered light rain as early as 5, 6 o'clock. So before sunset, about 40% coverage there. Again, scattered, spotty, light rain being the key word there. We do not anticipate any severe weather whatsoever. And even lightning is going to be hard to come by. This is a snapshot tomorrow at around 8 p.m. Again, 40% chance for that scattered light rain throughout the evening into the overnight hours as well. And by Tuesday morning, there could be some damp spots for the morning commute on Tuesday. But by about lunch on Tuesday, all of that rain should be off to the east. So as far as rainfall, again, we are not talking much rain. This is not going to help us out where the drought is concerned by any means. If you're lucky around San Antonio, perhaps a tenth of an inch of rain with more expected out west toward Del Rio, about a quarter to half and about a quarter to half inch of rain possible for parts of deep south Texas. But again, light rain, very light, just a bit of a nuisance for anybody who's planning on being outside trick or treating tomorrow night. Take that umbrella with you just in case you may not even need it for most of the night and temperatures will be on the cool side. We'll be looking at uh, after especially after sunset temperatures in the upper 60s. So just keep in mind that we'll be with you throughout this. If you want to have a radar with you on your uh, trick or treating excursions tomorrow night, make sure to have the case out weather authority app handy because not only is there a radar on there, but we're also going to be sending updates to you live on your phone as necessary as you're taking those kiddos trick or treating. Otherwise, we're going to see a gradual warm up after the rain ends mid morning Tuesday 80s by Thursday and Friday. It'll be humid by Thursday and Friday too, and a chance for storms seems possible on Saturday of this upcoming weekend. Right now we're saying 40% scattered storms, but we could be raising that uh, as we get closer to the weekend. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. So you are handing out candy, though. Absolutely. You expect trick-or-treaters. I expect a handful. And you're, <laughs> and you're not going to have any costume on? I'll do something. Okay. I'll do something quick. Okay. You know. I'm also going to be carving pumpkins at the same time. Ooh, I want to see pictures. Okay. All right, time now. It's just about 8.51, 51 degrees out. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, we'll be giving you some safety tips when it comes to you and your family, making sure that everyone is safe and having a fun Halloween. Don't forget, Muertos Fest still happening today from noon to 9 p.m. If you can't make it out, you can watch our primetime special airing tonight on KSAT at 8 p.m. Also on KSAT.com and our streaming app KSAT Plus. Take out your camera and um, scan this QR code on your screen for all of that information. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful day outside. Temperatures are going to climb into the upper 70s this afternoon. Little light winds from the west northwest at about five miles per hour. Going to be cool tonight, too, with temperatures falling into the 60s. Tomorrow, you'll see increasing clouds. Most of Monday will be quiet, but right around the time of trick or treating, you should plan for some spotty, scattered light rain. Bring the umbrella just in case. You may not need it, but it'll be good to have. It'll be coolish, too, with temperatures in the low 70s and upper 60s. No no severe weather is possible tomorrow and even lightning is unlikely, but we'll still be watching for watching for an isolated flash of lightning. So remember when thunder roars go indoors again, I don't think we're going to have much lightning out there tomorrow, mainly just some light spotty rain in the evening, about 40% coverage and throughout the day on Tuesday in the morning, we'll have some rain, but we'll by midday hours, it should be clearing out there nicely. As we look ahead to the week, it'll be warm by Thursday and Friday in the 80s with some humidity and a better chance for rain on Saturday of next weekend. All next right. year, we need to have costumes, all three of us. Deal. Witch, okay. Mommy, Gremlin. I don't know. We'll have to brainstorm. That's not going to happen. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Have a great day. Happy Sunday. Go